With the Halo franchise having a long lineage of recreating or remastering maps from previous games into the new version, it makes me wonder what maps are going to be recreated in Halo Infinite. Well, in this video, we're going to answer the top five options for you, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another commentary. Like I said, we're doing a top five video of the maps that I feel should be recreated in Halo Infinite. If you guys like these discussion kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the video and channel so more people get a chance to stay in the know with everything going on with Halo. So like I stated at the top of this video guys, every Halo game in existence to my knowledge, at least it's had a multiplayer tied to it, has recreated maps in some capacity or another. When it comes to Halo Infinite, yes, we do plan to have a free to play multiplayer with that game, which is quite exciting to know about. But it also kind of makes me wonder, what recreated maps are they gonna do for Halo Infinite? Halo Infinite set itself up to be like a soft reboot of the franchise, but this really opens the door for Halo Infinite to really just draw a lot of influence from various Halo titles. So rather than having this being like my subjective personal list, it still has that bias because I'm making this video, but what I decided to do was to choose the five maps I would like to see recreated in Halo Infinite that have already been recreated, if not once, if not multiple times within the Halo franchise, to make it feel like it's most likely these maps would be the ones to be showing up again in Halo Infinite. So let me know in the comment section down below what would be the top five maps you would like to see return in Halo Infinite. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. Number five on this list, we have Zanzibar. Starting off in Halo 2, and it's probably one of the most iconic maps you see within any Halo game. The iconic windmill circulating throughout the entire map just instantly lets you know exactly where you are, what map you're playing and you can recognize this map almost if you're not even a Halo player you've probably seen this windmill somewhere and you're like oh isn't that a Halo map because it's the art style and this is so unique and amazing that you can easily stand out among the crowd but the unique thing about Zanzibar is that it works really well with BTB I think that's kind of the initial design of it but it also works really well in 4v4 modes for BTB you can really kind of play whatever you want on it and it works out rather well when it comes to 4v4 modes it comes more to like focusing the action on certain areas so attack defense kind of modes like one flag one bomb work well within 4v4 Slayer can play a little slow, but I think it still works out rather well. The options of power weapons you have on this are super fun. Dueling sniper off at Camp Froman compared to the seawall. You have the sword, you have the rockets slash the Spartan laser in later versions of it as well, as well as active camo, because sometimes it can be a little tricky to push into the base for those attack defend modes. Active camo is crucial to help you out with that. This map is rather infantry focused, but it, you can do well with it on vehicles, uh, especially if you have a goshog like for BTB modes, that thing is crazy overpowered. Uh, you have very kind of more segregated lanes for these vehicles. So if you have a really well coordinated team, then you could do well with the vehicles. But if you're just kind of running around in the open, kind of doing whatever, Probably not so much, so it really requires a lot of teamwork and skill to do well with vehicles on the map. I think the best version of Zanzibar would have to be Last Resort in Halo 3. Really opened up the inner base area for more options to go in and out of, and also really opening up that area with the pillars to give you an extra catwalk, just an extra set of elevation to kind of get around the map a little bit better, and also just create more variation within gameplay. Number four on the list would have to be Midship. This is one of the most iconic maps you could possibly find in Halo. You probably be hearing me saying that lot iconic because Halo is such a strong lineage in the first person shooter genre that you can think of any one of these maps you're thinking oh yeah that's Halo and that's kind of the idea with Midship the only map on this list that actually takes advantage of the Covenant art style as well this map is great for competitive modes due to its symmetry but also really fun because for casual modes because of its smaller size it instantly puts you in the action as soon as you spawn in all you gotta do is either look left or right you're gonna find something to shoot I say this map plays out best on Slayer because it has a really strong emphasis on the battle rifle and positioning. So if you're looking for a fast paced map that really kind of showcases your skill, I really do feel that midship and all its, all its other variations is the map that really showcases off your ability to do well in Halo. But the only power weapons really being the sword, which 
doesn't really play out super well on this map. You got the shotgun bottom mid, which is the absolute death trap to go to. You got the plasma pistol, you got the carbine, but those aren't really utilized a whole lot. So it's really up to your game knowledge and battle rifle skill. And that's why I love midship. But you might be kind of surprised at my response on this one. Even though this map was remade in Halo 3, and in Halo 5, I do feel that Halo 5 actually has the better version, though its structure generally stayed about the same, but I do really like the aspect of Halo 5 within the base that you have two options to jump out of the base so you don't have to take that lift every single time, which really helped create a lot of spawn trapping within the Halo 2 and Halo 3 versions. Though with Halo 5 obviously adding in boost and clamber just kind of removes some of the crouch jumping moves that would, you would never really expect from a lot of more newbie kind of players. Though in Halo 5, Zealot was one of the best maps in the game. So that really tells you that this map actually holds up well, obviously with some minor modifications in classic and modern gameplay. So I think Midship would be an amazing option for Halo Infinite as it's looking to try to combine those two kinds of game styles together. Number three on this list is one of the most iconic competitive maps ever to come within the Halo franchise, and that has to be The Pit. Very conducive for competitive play due to its symmetry, but also rather fun for social game modes due to since it's a mirrored image of its symmetry that it's easier for new players to learn and understand with a limited amount of routes you can take either through Sword Room, Pop Mid, Banana, or the Rocket Hall. That's really all the only options you really have to cross the map through so casual players won't be, feel so overwhelmed with all the angles they have to watch. This map plays out well for Team Slayer, CTF, and King of the Hill in my opinion. With the power weapon selection being two sniper rifles, which is really fun to start off with, where you feel like you have a mad dash to that sniper rifle, and as soon as you grab it, you look right over to the other team spawn to kind of counter snipe them. You catch them if they're running a little bit late. The rocket launcher obviously is an important part of it, I feel like in every Halo map. It, but they also have the sword on the opposite side to kind of give some more sneaky corner act, crouching action right there. But if you're having some issues moving around, you got the camo, which spawns in the middle hallway. And you also have overshield, which spawns down below the sword room for the more social modes. So given the simplicity of the map and movement you have, it adds a lot more complexity with the sandbox you have on the map with trying to balance out so many different power weapons, trying to balance out so many different power ups and just you know position yourself properly that it still becomes a very dynamic and fun game mode and the these power weapons become crucial when it comes to gaining map control within the level. The best version of this map I still think holds true to Halo 3. Once they remove those top base spawns in uh, the pit and made it to pit stop, the map became essentially one of the best maps ever made in Halo and I love playing this map whenever it comes up. I get excited. Number two on this map list, I feel like it's one of those maps that just absolutely needs to be in almost every Halo game or in some capacity or another, and that's the map Sanctuary. Another symmetrical map which really plays itself very well for competitive modes, but also really great for social as the, again, like I said in the previous map that it works well for social players to pick up and learn rather easily. And Sanctuary has rather predictable spawns, so you can either assume that they're gonna be spawning on the turret or in the rocks leading the players who have excellent game knowledge and take advantage of understanding how the spawn system works in the game to do better in the game because they know how to play. With Halo 2 actually having the required skill jump of learning how to do the ring three jump really gave players with extra skill and knowledge of the map to take advantage and actually do better in the game as a whole, which I feel like is kind of the theme of Halo's multiplayer. That you don't necessarily have to be the greatest shot in the world as long as you know how to play the game and all its parts and things you can do with the game, you'll do better than your average player. Though in the H2A version, they did make that ring three jump a little bit easier, if in my opinion, a little too easy. I would like to see it a little bit timed a little better just to make it much more of a skill jump rather than a jump that you can just know of doing kind of thing. Uh, I feel like also in Reach, they tried to kind of find a nice balance between the Halo 2 jump, which actually would say is a little too difficult for an average player to make, but it uh, does require you to jump on very specific geometry to at least, you know, do it rather accurately, but it's also not super easy like it is in H2A. This map is great for Team Slayer, it's great for Bomb, it's great for Capture the Flag, any two base mode, it's awesome. King of the Hill, it's really fun in with that center area becomes the hill, it's total chaos and just grenades and just explosions and honestly it's pretty dang fun. Now the best version of this map within Halo, as you know it started in Halo 2, was recreated in Halo Reach, and it was also recreated in H2A. Now depending on which version you look at it, either H2 or H2A I'd find be the best version, 
depending on how you do the ring three jump. If they made the ring three jump a little bit more difficult in H2A, I'd probably say that's the best version of it. But I think the classic is pretty tough to beat. And number one on this list, we do know that Halo Infinite is drawing a strong influence from Combat Evolved. And if this game is supposed to be a soft reboot, a new beginning, where did it all begin for almost all, all of us Halo fans back in the day? Well, I think if you think of multiplayer maps, in Combat Evolved, you gotta think of Blood Gulch. This is where multiplayer fun began. This is the map when it comes to Combat Evolved. This is the map when it comes to Halo. Any fan that's maybe been away for a long time for the franchise, their first idea of a Halo map is Blood Gulch. And any fan who's been around long enough probably also thinks of, well, Blood Gulch is one of the most iconic maps ever within the Halo franchise. I mean, this is the map where boys became men. Blood Gulch is also the most recreated map within the Halo franchise, obviously starting with Combat Evolved, recreated in Halo 2 as Coagulation, and they mentioned it being spiritually evolved into Valhalla in Halo 3, and also recreated in Forge and in Forge World, just in general, in Halo Reach. Finalizing in the H2A remake as well, which, tell me, that does not look awesome. With two snipers at each base, we have kind of sniping duels going back and forth between the bases and specific angles, which kind of become more predictable and skill-based. You also have the rocks that are in the middle of the map and plenty of vehicle space. This map has so much vehicle freedom to roam around in that it really does give the player so much creativity of how they want to approach this map. Do you want to be more infantry based and stick to the outsides? Do you want to be more vehicle focused and run with the middle area? We were running with a Warhog or a, maybe even a tank. I mean, I just can't think of a more iconic map to be recreated in Halo Infinite than Blood Gulch. That's just, that's Halo to me. I have so many personal memories with this map as well. So many days of my friends coming over, we, we would be split screening every night, just way too late and then going back, going to school, coming back home to split screen some more Blood Gulch CTF. This was the game. This was the map that made me into the player I am today. So if Halo Infinite that is a soft reboot is won't be bringing in Blood Gulch, I find it is a huge mistake and a greatly missed opportunity, especially since it hasn't been recreated in Halo since H2A, but it really that's kind of more of a remake. So the last time it was honestly like in an original game would be Reach, which is back in 2010, so a lot of the new fans haven't really had the opportunity to play this map. And like I said, there's been multiple recreations of this map. I would honestly say the best version of it would either be the H2 or H2A versions of it. The reason why I say that is the additional cover that's added into the map with either being rocks or trees or a teleporter in some way or another. They kind of just give players the ability to move throughout the map a little bit more. If Halo Infinite goes with a projectile based weaponry, which I have I just have a strong feeling that they will, then you could really have a lot of fun on Blood Gulch. So those are the five maps I feel that should be recreated in Halo Infinite. Like I said, if you have your own five, leave it in the comment section down below. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. If you'd like to see another version of this video, say like a five maps that should be remade that haven't been remade, let me know in the comment section down below. If you missed any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen right over here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos if you've been on the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.